So the question is, should you be using these online mastering services where robots magically master your music and supposedly make it sound great? And also, what do you do if you have a band in the studio and they don't want to play to the click or they claim that they can't play to the click? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Viewer Questions Answered, episode 30. So without any further ado, let's jump into this excellent group of questions submitted by my loyal subscribers. And our first question here comes from Flo. Hey Bobby, just one question. I use room mics for drum recording. It's mostly a stereo pair, but sometimes just mono. Is the EQ and compression settings in your drums instrument group within your PDF the way that you deal with overheads only? Where do you get that glue from then? All the best. Flow. Okay, well, Flow, this is an excellent question. And by the way, for anyone who's watching, if you're interested in accessing this PDF that Flow is mentioning, you could have direct access to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The formula comes with three main components, an EQ and compression cheat sheet that covers all of the main instruments within a heavy production. Within the PDF guide, there are clickable links to private tutorials for each of the main instruments. And right below each of the tutorials, you get a multi-track download so you can mix along with me. Again, the Crisp and Clear Heavy Mix formula is absolutely free and you could have direct access right now by clicking the link below. Now, Flo, great question. In the formula, I mentioned overheads, right? And my method for EQing overheads is I wanna just pretty much focus in on only the sound of the cymbals, not the rest of the kit. Now, when it comes to country or jazz or pop music or any other genre of music for the most part, uh, I might do something different. I might try to get more drums out of the overheads, but when it comes to metal and extreme genres of music where you want extra clarity, for me, I want mainly just cymbals coming through my overheads. And I like to glue the sound of the kit together using a room mic or room mics, multiple room mics. Now you're asking why I didn't add room mics to the PDF guide, and the reason is simple. It really depends on the room. But let me just tell you this, when it comes to room mics, for the most part for me, I do very little as far as processing. Generally just a roll off at around 100 hertz, sometimes a little higher if I want less low end. and. For the most part, in most cases, if it's recorded in an untreated room, I like to roll off a lot of the top end. So most of the room mic sound or most of the tone of the room mics is really sat and focused in the mid range. And that's really it. I don't like to squash room mics with compression. Often I don't use any compression at all on my room mics. It's mainly just a low and high pass filter and it all depends on the sound of the room and also the genre of music I'm working on. If I want a very splashy sounding room, if there's a lot of open space, I'll allow more top end in uh, and also some more bottom end. But if it's a very tight, crazy, you know, death metal production, I'll mainly focus my rooms in the mid range. And again, for me, the room mics are there mainly just to glue the sound of the kit together and to make it sound like a unified instrument and give it some more realism. Excellent question and let me know how that works out for you. Okay, our next question here comes from Rotten Recordings. When I inform the guitarist I'm going to need a solid scratch track to a metronome, they'll whine that they get lost without the drummer. And obviously the drummer can't drum to a track that doesn't exist and play the song blindly. It's maddening and I'm not really proficient enough to MIDI out a song I've never even heard before. That being said, would you A, have the drummer record with a live guitarist playing through an amp sim and remap all the drums later? Or B, have the guitarist record as solid of a scratch track as possible with the metronome before the drummer even touches a drumstick? But damn if guitarists just cannot remember their songs without the drums. Nor can they play their songs to a metronome and keep it tight. It takes up a lot of time. Thanks. Rotten recordings. Okay, man, well, what you're describing here is unfortunately very, very common when you're working with local bands. I'm gonna just say this, the method that I use is definitely your second method uh, that you mentioned in your email. I also wanna say this, if a guitar player cannot play their song to a click track without their drummer, then they just don't know their song well enough, unfortunately, and recording is going to be challenging overall. It's not gonna just be the drums. I mean, if a band doesn't know their songs, I, from my own experience, those are the projects that are usually kind of a nightmare, to be honest with you. So this is why I pretty much go about this two different ways. If a band asks to book with me, I ask for pre-production demos, right? Uh, or at least a guitar performance track to a scratch track, because we have to remember, um, if a drummer is expected to play the entire song or group of songs to a click track in the studio, they should have prepared for this well in advance, because playing in a room together as a band and playing to a click track and a scratch track 
are two completely different things. This is why if an inexperienced band comes into the studio and they've never played to a click and the guitar player is telling you that he gets lost without the drummer, it's gonna take a lot more than just drum day to get everything worked out. Now, let me just say this. If I'm working with a younger band that maybe they're not tech savvy or they haven't done their own pre-production, I will block out actual pre-production days because here's what's gonna happen without fail. You get the guitar player to play along to a click, you have the drummer sitting there and they work out the song together and they say, yeah, that sounds right. The choruses are in the right spot. The verses are in the right spot. The breakdown is sounding right. Awesome. The second that you, you know, have the drummer record and he's playing to the click, everyone realizes, oh my God, the song is too fast. Oh my God, the song is too slow. Oh my God, the chorus sounds too slow. Oh wait, no wait, that riff ends too early and you're gonna have to go back and re-record the entire thing. This has happened to me dozens upon dozens, maybe even hundreds of times at this point. So unfortunately, when it comes to working with bands that are younger or maybe not as experienced, you have to take that extra step and book out pre-production days because you can't record drums on the same day if they don't know their songs, which is what you're describing right here. Yes, it takes a lot of time, but this is why pros get paid to produce bands. It's the attention to detail and the time and all of the work that goes into producing a pro result, which is why there's the demand for this profession in the first place. And I also want to say this, if a band ever says, oh, well, we want to play together, that's fine and dandy, but then ask them, what do you want your album to sound like? If they send you a copy of The Grateful Dead, cool. If they send you a copy of, you know, Van Halen 1 or Old Black Sabbath, totally cool. But if they want to sound like Periphery, if they want to sound like a tech death band, forget about it. Educate them, block out days for pre-production. It's the only way you're gonna get it done the right way. Excellent question and keep me posted on your progress. Okay, our next question here comes from Mr. Craig. Hey Bobby, when it comes to mastering, have you ever tried sites like Lander? I've read the pros and cons on multiple forums. I've also tried Lander with one of our songs and with a bit of tweaking via the interface, got a good result. One of our band members had an issue with this as he found it difficult to grasp that AI could do a better job than a mastering engineer. I thought that was a fair point. Unless we had a professionally mastered version and an AI version of the same song, there is no benchmark for comparison. Ooh, good point. A mastering engineer costs around $100 a song. Lander is $2 a song. What are your thoughts on this and have you ever tried online mastering? Thanks, Craig. Okay, well, Craig, Excellent question. And by the way, for anyone who's watching, everything I'm about to say here is only my opinion. So you can take it however you want, uh, but this is just my own experience. Again, just my own viewpoint and my opinion. So just wanted to say this. Here's my opinion. There is no way on earth, on earth, that a robot or a machine is going to magically master your song to sound awesome. Mastering is an art form, just like production and just like mixing. Um, now, I've never used any of these sites like Lander, but I could tell you this much. I've heard some horrific, horrific results from some of these sites. Now, it's been a while. Uh, the last I've heard was maybe five years ago. I haven't, most of the clients that I work with, we, nobody uses these online sites. Maybe home recorders to do that want a louder master or things like that. But here's another thing I want to bring up that people don't realize. Mastering is not the magic bullet that people generally think. 90%, at least 90% of your final polished recording or production should really come from the mix. Mastering should only be that final five to 10%. Uh, maybe a little bit of level, maybe a tiny bit of EQ. If you have a product that you're not happy with, mastering is not going to fix it. I can tell you that much. I've worked with a bunch of different professional mastering engineers uh, and I master my own work at this point and most of it comes from the actual mix. So. My opinion is this. Now, I love working with great mastering engineers, especially if I'm working with a band that wants something printed to not only digital, uh, but also to vinyl. I always prefer to work with a mastering engineer that specializes in the format, like vinyl, uh, but I would never trust something that's AI like that. I would rather just master it myself because Again, I've heard of people getting lucky, but a lot of the times they get lucky because the actual source was okay. And at that point, you might as well just use a plugin like Ozone and master it yourself. That's just my opinion. Again, I don't have a lot of experience, but just based off of what I have heard in the past, I just don't like the idea of it. I'd rather just pay someone to do it right or do it myself. Craig, excellent question. And let me know if you have any other questions related to this topic. It's a good one. Okay, our final question here comes from Tavik, mastering online. Is there any way I could purchase your IRs? Well, Tavik, good news for you. All of my IRs are absolutely free. 
And as a matter of fact, you can download my IR Octopack. It contains eight different IRs, four different microphones, two mic placements per microphone. Again, the IR pack is absolutely free and you can download it by clicking below. Now I get this question a lot actually. People ask if I'm ever gonna put out a paid IR pack. You know, I offer a lot of different variations. Just a more in-depth, thorough IR pack. And to be honest with you, within my own productions, I really only use a handful of IRs, but people keep asking about it. So let me know, would you like an official Frightbox IR pack where, you know, maybe I have IRs of a bunch of different cabs, a bunch of different microphones, a plethora for you to choose from, more than eight. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know your opinion. It's something that people ask and I'm thinking about doing it, maybe, but I wanna hear from you. So I would just like to shout out and thank everyone for submitting this excellent group of questions. And please keep in mind, if you've sent me a question and I haven't gotten to it yet, just be patient. I'll definitely get to it within one of these videos in this series. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload World of Weekly videos on all things Metal and Rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, I've got t-shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool stuff on the way. There's a link below to the Frightbox merch store in this video's description. And again, if you're struggling with mixing, we have to keep in mind that so much of a good mix comes from using solid EQ and compression moves. And because of this, I'm offering you direct access for absolutely free to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The heavy mix formula comes with an EQ and compression cheat sheet, private mixing tutorials for each of the main instruments within the heavy mix, and multi-track downloads that you could download so you can mix along with me that go along with each of the tutorials. You can have direct access to the crisp and clear heavy mix formula for absolutely free by clicking the link below. Until next time, happy mixing.